Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 9 of the Discord bot coding tutorial series. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at making an economy bot, which I know people have been waiting for for quite a while. Uh, I know you guys have been looking forward to it uh, because it's, it's sort of putting everything we've learned together. All these little parts like keeping the buttons in some in separate files and the run, like keeping everything about the command in one file and all these different little tweaks we've made along the way with the slash register and the index.js and keeping everything organized. This will all now come into great use and make it much easier when we're making our economy bot. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set up our database. So I think what we'll do is we'll actually put our database into a separate file. Since there's no point in having it all crowded into our main file anyway, we'll remove our old stuff about the user. So let's head and make a new file. Call it database.js. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a module. Actually, we're going to put, uh, firstly, we're going to require SQLize. So basically, we're going to take what we did in this file and move it over. So we're going to require SQLize. And we are going to make our database. And we are going to, I think that's everything we need from this file. Yep. So now we're going to go ahead and create our table in here. So we're going to do module.exports. And let's make the first, let's make the table called uh, economy equals database dot define. We're going to put the name. So the name is going to be economy comma and an object. So what properties do we want to store about a user? We don't need too much information other than the user's ID, which we're going to use as a primary key true going to be a type uh, sequelize dot string and it's going to be unique other than that we really just need the user's balance so we're going to call it balance and it's going to be sequelize dot string but this is meant to be an integer and it's not meant to be a string just to be clear so make sure you set this as uh, sequelize dot integer and not sequelize dot string so we're going to do const economy equals require uh, database.js. We can just leave it as database if we don't need the.js. So what we've done now is we've required economy in our main file. So we can go ahead and head to our ready object here and do economy.sync. And now when as this restarts, it's now registered our economy table in our database. So basically now we have a blank table with ID and balance. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's create a balance command. So we're going to do balance.js. And we're just going to copy one of our older commands here because we don't really need to uh, make it new every time. I'm going to set the name to balance, set the description to check the balance of yourself or another user. And we're going to add user option. And we're going to do option.set name to user, sorry, I mean, let's say to a person, dot set required, it's not going to be required, dot set description, user to check the balance of. Okay, so now we have a command set up, so we're going to need to make a run. So what we're going to do is we are going to pass our economy database in through our command. So we're going to go down to here. Sorry, go down to here. And we're going to pass in economy. So now what we can do is in every command, if we want to access economy, we can do so. We can just add. So in here we have options first, and then we have economy, so we can require economy. So now we have access to our economy database in this file. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we can let user equal options.getUser that's either going to be the person that they mentioned or so these two pipe keys here mean or it's going to be interaction.member 
So it's either going to be if the user put a person in, it's going to be that user. Otherwise, it's going to be the interaction member. And actually, we're going to make this a member because we want to be able to access the properties of the member. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to get the user from the database. So we're going to do let get user equal economy dot find one where the ID is equal to member ID. Let me fix that. There you go. So we're getting the user from the economy database. And actually, we do need to await this. And every time we need to await something, we should make this async. So it allows us to pause the code here and wait for us to get see if the user exists or not. So we're waiting if economy can find one entry in the database where the ID is equal to this member's ID here, whether it's the user they mentioned or themselves. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and do if there is no user, well, we want to go ahead and create the user. So we can do get user equals await economy dot create ID of member dot ID and a balance of zero. So what this is going to do basically is assign get user to waiting for economy to create a new entry with ID member ID and balance zero. So what we can do then is basically let's craft an embed to send back. So we're going to do let embed equals new message embed. We set the title to be, um, we're going to use our back ticks here again. And we're going to put, we're going to put the member's name, member dot display name, apostrophe S balance. We're going to set the description to be, um, let's just put it as, back ticks again, we're going to put get user dot balance coins. And we're going to set the color just to aqua. So what we've done now is we've made an embed as the title of member dis members name balance, a description of the, the balance and coins, we're actually going to bold this, we're going to bold the number, and we're going to set the color to aqua. And at the end, what we're going to do is return interaction dot edit reply embeds embed so just previously as we've done with the manage command we just need to put um, embeds embed like that because obviously we can have a list of embeds if we want to but as we only have one we only need to put one embed into the list so one last thing we need to do is we need to head back over to our index.js and we need to set this register slash we need to set the slash register to true obviously to register our new slash command and we see success to reload it, so we can remove the true then. So if we go ahead and try this out, slash balance, I'm not gonna supply a user the first time. We'll see Sam's balance, zero coins. And if I do slash balance and I put in a person, so I put tutorial, you will see tutorial's balance is also zero coins. So that means basically now we have two rows in our table, one with my ID and zero, and one with the bots ID and zero. So we're gonna create a work command now, so work.js. And we're going to basically um, we'll copy and paste the, the ping command again, because that's the shortest one we have. Change it to work. Um, work for coins. I'll put. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's say the user will earn let coins earned equal. Let's make it 15 coins. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our options and economy here again. So we're going to do that get user equal await economy and we should make this async again because we put await economy dot find one I can spell find one where ID is interaction dot member dot ID. So what we're doing here is similar as before we're just getting the member from our database and what we're going to do is again we're actually just going to take it from here because it's, it's faster so we're just going to say if there's no user we're going to make a user with balance zero and we have to change this to interaction.member.id so same as before get a user if they don't exist make a user and what we're going to do is then we're going to add the coins onto their balance so we're going to do await economy.update 
So the first thing you have to give here is an object of what we're updating. So we're going to update the balance of the user. And we're going to update it to their old balance. So get user.balance plus coins earned. And the second argument we need to provide is the condition of who we're updating that for. So we're going to update it for everyone where the their ID is interaction.member.id. So basically, this is updating the balance to the user's old balance plus the coins you've just earned, where um, inside of the database, an entry matches this here. So anyone with the ID of the member. So obviously, the only one with the ID of the member is going to be the person who ran the command. And then let's return a success message, return interaction.edit reply. And content, we'll just write content this time. We'll just say, you have earned 15 coins. OK. So if we go over to our index.js and we register this command by putting it as here, true. There we go. And we remove true again. So if we head on over to Discord now and we try slash work, you have earned 15 coins. And now if we try slash balance, uh, I'll just balance myself. We will see I now have 15 coins. And as we can see, if we do balance tutorial, we'll see tutorial still has zero coins as we add it so it only updates for our account. So we've made a very basic economy bot so far. We have a work command to earn coins and we have a way to check our balance, which are two very key parts to uh, managing an economy. So what we'll do now is we'll actually add a pay command. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow a user to pay another user. So we're going to go and we're going to copy, we'll copy our work command this time. We'll put it into the pay command, set name pay, pay another user, and we're going to add an option, add a user option with the name, uh, set name person. Make sure you don't have uh, uppercase in your name, by the way, otherwise it won't work. Uh, set required, true, since we need a person to give the money to. And we're going to set the description to be the user you want to pay. And we do need, actually need to add a final option, add integer option, which is the amount of money they want to give. So option.set name, amount.set required true, dot set description, the amount to give. So now we have our name, description, user option, and integer option. So we can go ahead and keep most of the code from here. But we're going to, so yeah, we need to keep this bit of code here because we need to check if the user has enough to pay the money in the first place. So we can do, we're actually going to put here first, let um, amount equal options.getinteger amount. And we're going to do let member equal options.getmember person. So now we have the amount they want to pay and the user they want to pay it to. And we know they're going to be there because they it's set required. So what we can do is we can make sure that the number is valid. So we can do, for example, if amount is uh, less than one, or if you want, you can put it as well if the amount is greater than, let's say you don't want to let people pay more than a thousand. So we can have if it's less than one, and if the amount is more than a thousand, then we want to return uh, interaction.edit reply content invalid amount must be between one and a thousand. So now basically it won't let people pay it. If you try not to make people pay a ton of money, they can only pay a maximum of a thousand at a time now. So the next thing we'll do is now we know the user's balance. So we can check if get user dot balance, if their balance is less than the amount they're trying to pay, we can return interaction dot edit reply content invalid. Sorry, we'll, we'll say insufficient balance. So now we've done two checks. So we've checked the amount and we've checked if the user has enough. So the next thing we need to do is actually get the other user's account. So we're going to let member balance equal away economy dot find one where ID is uh, member dot ID. And we can have this whole thing here again. That if we can't find the member balance, so we're going to check if no member balance equal to uh, member.id. So we just same thing up, same thing as up there again. If we're going to get the member balance and if it doesn't exist, we're going to make uh, a new one with id member id and balance zero. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and and add the money on. So we're going to do that 
new balance equal member balance dot balance plus amount. So we've taken the members balance and we've added the amount to it. So all I have to do now is update the two balances. So we're going to do a way to me to update. So we're going to update the user who got the money to new balance where the ID is member ID. And we're going to update the user who sent the money's balance to get user dot balance minus amount. So we can actually also just put this up here along with what we did here. So we can do let member balance, sorry not member balance, let um, let sender balance equal get user dot balance minus amount. So we can do this as sender balance where ID is interaction dot member dot ID. So what we've done here now is basically we've updated the user to have their new money added on and we've updated the sender to remove the money that they sent. And what we'll do is we'll change our message down here. We'll actually make this an embed as well. So embed equal new message embed. Now set title to money transfer complete. And we'll go ahead and put a money emoji on the front and end of this to brighten up a bit. Set the description to we'll make it uh, interaction dot member dot display name. I'll make that uh, bold as well actually. So we're gonna bold this. Has sent and I'll put amount coins to member dot display name. And we'll bold the member's name as well. Set the color to green for money. And that should be, we'll actually also add a set thumbnail. So set the little image on the side. And we will set that to the user it was transferred to. So member user dot avatar URL. Okay, so we need to then change this to embeds, embed. So one final thing we need to do as always is head back to here, change this to true, let the commands update and remove the true and let it restart. So let's head back here. We will do slash balance. So we'll check my balance first. So my balance is 15. We'll check the balance of my other account and that is zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay Sam. Let's try paying him zero. Invalid amount must be between one and a thousand. So if we try now and pay Sam, let's pay a thousand and one. We get the same error again. But if I try and pay Sam and let's pay 10, Sam has sent 10 coins. So obviously, it's the same name, but you can see the exclamation mark and the, <laughs> the um, asterisk at the end. But uh, now, if we check the balance of myself, I have five coins. We check the balance of my other account it has 10 coins. So that is how we can transfer money between different people, which is really cool. So there's a ton of ways to branch this out. You could make a store and make it so people can buy rolls or buy different items, or you could make it so there's more commands or there's potential to lose money when you use the work command. There's all different ways you could go about this, which is really cool. And I hope this is showing you the basics of setting up balance and the database, obviously, that holds the balance and setting up money transferring, which is pretty cool. And just in general is showing you sort of the structure of setting up a bot because obviously we have the database in a separate file to keep it clean. We have our buttons all stored in, in our commands itself. So if we have a button, it's inside the command. So I hope this has given you a good insight onto how to make an economy bot. And I'm sure with the skills you've learned in this series and using the documentation that you'll be able to expand this out and make this an amazing bot for your community. But I hope this gives you a good base. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or feel free to join the Discord server in the description and people might be able to help you out there. But thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.